Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to uh, another SHA development webinar. Joel Hausman with Saskatchewan Hockey. Uh, good to have you this evening. Um, lots of the same faces we've had on the last couple nights. So uh, we're lucky to have uh, Danny Wide from Level 10 with us tonight. We're going to talk about uh, exercise, strength, and conditioning at home while we're while we're stuck in our houses here over over the holidays. But I'm just going to pass it to uh, Jake Murray from from our office just to give some instructions and. And we'll start. So, Jake. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Jake Murray, communications and uh, marketing coordinator for SAS Hockey. Just some stuff before we get going. If anybody has any questions throughout, uh, feel free to use the chat. If you just hover your cursor over top of the screen, you'll see the chat box right in the middle below. Uh, feel free to type in questions as we're going, and we'll get to, end, uh, to answer them as he's going along. Um, the meeting is being recorded, so if everybody could just please keep their mics uh, muted unless they, they have a question, in which case we'll, uh, we'll answer it accordingly. And uh, other than that, I, uh, I think back to you. Thanks, Jake. I just want to introduce and thank Danny Y from Level 10 for coming on tonight. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dan has been our, our lead uh, strength and conditioning coach for our Team SAS and SAS First programs over the last couple of years. Um, he does all of our summer sessions, our testing sessions, uh, creating our fitness plans for, for our team SASC athletes. So uh, we've worked with them lots and, and we're pumped to do this session with everybody tonight just to give you some tips and listen to his expertise on strength and conditioning. So Dan, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. Uh, like Jake mentioned, uh, please feel free to, to ask questions throughout. And if you uh, are using the chat, Joel or Jake will just ask the question for you on here. Um, I want to be as interactive as I can. Uh, if you guys want to do some of this stuff, you can. Um, I'm going to kind of just talk about some of the, like the progression of the workout for kind of what we've been doing the last, um, was it eight, nine months now? We started doing some of these online workouts in, in March and they've actually continued all the way through. There's been some groups that have been a little bit too big. So we've continued doing online workouts for some teams, <clears throat> even though some have uh, split up and come into the gym. It's kind of a nice way for a big team still to work out together, uh, even though they're not in the same facility. So the way we kind of structure our workouts is we'll start with a warm up. So a lot of the warm ups can be, you know, some sort of cardiovascular. So if you do have a bike or a treadmill at home, you can you can head on to the bike for for five, 10 minutes. Uh, or the treadmill or whatever you guys want to do there. Um, and then with, with some of our teams, we'll just, I'll just get, I'll just get kids to go grab something that they can use as a marker if they don't have cones. So they said, I have five different shoes down right now. Um, we're going to use them as, as hurdles, cones, as a ladder, whatever you guys want. I'm going to take you through some different patterns here um, just to kind of show you some of the things that you can do around them. Uh, and they can kind of be used as all three, like I said, ladder cones and hurdles. We can go over them, we can go through them, and then we can use them kind of like squares we would as we would in a ladder. So um, this is how we kind of like to get started, get the heart rate up, get the body warmed up, and then we'll get into a little bit more of a, of a stretch and, and mobility session. So um, I won't spend too much time on this, but I do want to show you a few things. So we'll start kind of as if they were hurdles. So we're just going to get out to the end. We're going to just do a lateral step over top. And again, if you have the space, you can use 10 shoes. Okay. So I'm just doing five because it fits into my screen here tonight. Okay. So from here, we're just going to go two steps over top. So again, if you have, if you have a short distance, like I do right now, I would probably go there and back. Right. So I would, I would work on that one foot plant, come back. And because it's, because it's warm up, I want to work on range of motion. So I'm not necessarily worried about how fast I'm going right now. I'm thinking about taking the top of my thigh, lifting it up, getting that good range of motion, single leg plant on the outside, almost using it for balance. Okay. Another pattern that we would do going over would be a crossover. Okay. So we can do this two different ways. So with your younger athletes, I would do a crossover where they step together because they have smaller strides. So I would get them to cross over step into the same space with some of my older athletes, a little bit bigger of a step, they would cross over and then step into the next one. So it's a little bit more momentum. And then I would work on a, on a two foot plant there. OK, 
okay? A couple other over ones would be different jumps. You could do a hop where you're just going over top like that. Again, with some of your athletes, they try and get going a little bit too fast. So I try and control them a little bit by adding a hop in the middle. So they learn how to control their body a little bit more. Okay, so those are some over patterns. If you do have some um, more advanced or elite athletes, you could do some single leg stuff towards the end of the work, or, uh, sorry, at the end of a warm up. You know, you could do a line of single leg going forwards, single leg going sideways, single leg going sideways as a lead foot, different things like that. Again, I won't get into too much more because we can do some of that as the actual workout. So now a little bit more stuff as, as we can kind of go around them. So now we're using our shoes as more of a cone. Okay, we can start with the kind of a lateral slide or a lateral shuffle where your athlete is coming around. Okay, we can do it also going backwards. So your athlete has to get out a little bit further find the slot that they're going through, things like that. Forwards and backwards, there's a couple of different ones that you can do here. You can do it as, as a loop, either going underneath. So sometimes I'll get another marker. What do I have here? I have some, uh, <laughs> I have some bowling pins. So maybe I'll put a marker up here. So now I have my athlete coming up a little bit further. So they're going up and back in the same, in the same line. Again, you could do that with the lateral movement as well, where they have to come out to a certain distance. And then obviously you can do it as the up and back where it's a little bit more of a quick foot drill, getting those feet moving nice and quick. So there's a few different things that you can do there. And you can throw in crossovers in. This one's nice going backwards. It's kind of a little bit more of a flow where you cross over, end up a little bit further outside. Okay, so a couple of different patterns going around that way. And then you could think of it as being a closed line or a closed sides. So everything's a square. You could move your your markers in a little bit closer, kind of like a speed ladder. And then you can do some, some movements like you would there. So if I'm in my square like this, some patterns that we've done through, through the ladder before, makes it a little bit harder because the ladder's not right flat against the ground like it normally is. So you've got to be a little bit more careful with that. Like even something like a hopscotch. Now your, you know, your, your squares are a little bit more defined. It actually makes it a little bit more challenging like that. So again, however you want to do this, again, you don't need a lot of space for a warm up. One, two, I have two and a half yards right here, and obviously maybe one or two yards wide. You don't need a lot of space. I'm huffing and puffing right now, and I'm only doing a quarter of the movements, uh, if that. So, uh, and again, you're in your basement or wherever you are, you're gonna get that heart rate up pretty quick. You're gonna get that body temperature up pretty quick. So you think about that, you know, you think about the space you're in, you know, I'm not in, not in a very huge space right now, pretty low ceiling. You compare that to our 6,000 square foot, you know, facility that we normally have it in. You're going to get warmed up a lot quicker in your basement just because, you know, distances are a little bit shorter. You're working a little bit more. You don't have 15 people going through the line at the same time. So you're not standing around waiting. Your warm up, <clears throat> excuse me, your warm up in the sense of body temperature heart rate on all those things, even range of motion, because you're doing more repetitions, because maybe it's just you and your brother, you and your sister, you and your you know, mom or whatever, doing the workout together down here, your repetitions are going a lot quicker. So your warm up may, may not take as long. 
right? Even just this movement part portion of it, okay? Um, but like I said, this is just one thing that we can do. But again, I'm using them as hurdles, cones, and a speed ladder. So you could, you could do all three. You could do a couple of them. And then, so normally what I would do, so no matter which pattern I'm doing, uh, I usually do about three or four. And in that sense, if I'm going forwards and backwards, I usually do three. If I'm going side to side, I usually two, do two from each side. So I do four. So if I'm doing that lateral step over top of my shoes, I'll do two facing you, I'll do two facing the back wall. Same thing on my crossover. If I'm doing my lateral shuffle like this, I'll do three of them, okay? If I'm going up and back, I'll do two facing each way and so on. Just to give you an idea of, of kind of a set rep scheme for warm up. okay? But like I said, if, you, if, if it's some, just something you're throwing in there to kind of mix it up, it's a nice little thing to do. Um, you take a skipping rope, you lay it on the ground, you can do the same thing. So if I have just a straight line, so for some reason I don't have any shoes in my house, but you have a nice long rope or two hockey sticks, you still can do a lot of the same patterns. Some of it, there might be a little bit more jumping just because it's just a line. So maybe you're just going, you know, eight touches on each side doing the same thing forward to backwards. We can work a single leg plant, touch, touch. You can do that backwards. You can do it forwards. Shuffling your feet on the other side of the, of the line, okay? So you don't need a lot of things, a lot of fancy looking things to get those feet warmed up, to get the body warmed up even to do speed agility. And we'll get to that in a little bit, okay? But again, if you have a treadmill, go for a run to warm up. If you have a bike, do the same thing. But this is a nice thing to throw in. Even if you do five minutes on the bike, just to get the heart rate going a little bit, and then you come and do a little bit of footwork, right? Just to get everything working out a little bit more, you're gonna have that body temperature and that heart rate going pretty quick, okay? Any questions about about the movement portion of warm up? Are we good right now? Okay. So then what we'll do is we'll get into a little bit of a stretch. So again, I always tell my athletes, whoever I'm working with, if you have five steps, if you have 10 steps, use that. If you don't have that much space, do five or six on each side. So we do our kind of traditional walking stretches quad stretch, we lay into the hamstring a little bit, we'll get the hips opened up, okay, inside out, we'll go outside in, two different stretches there, we'll do some different walking lunge stretches, so a forwards lunge where we're reaching and or where maybe we're rotating, getting, the, getting a little thoracic rotation in, we do a side lunge, Okay, and we do this one traveling sometimes. So if I have the space, I'll move with this one as well. You know, anything where there's a kick, like a hamstring going forwards, hamstring going backwards, like kicking back like that. Again, if you've done any kind of workouts before, those are, are pretty straight forwards. There's some stationary dynamics that we like to throw in, a, a good lower back, groin, Hamstring exercise is one we call the bootstraps. So we take a little bit of a wider stance. We try and get down nice and low. And on this one, we're trying to get into the groin a little bit. So we kind of push the knees out. We can go single leg, single leg there. Okay, and then we pop up. And we can do hamstrings, we can do both, we can do one. And this one I like because you can kind of do it in two different techniques. We can do one in a little bit better form which means I'm trying to keep my upper body as strong as I can. So I kind of sit down as low as I can with a strong back position. Same thing with the hamstrings. So I'll do about three or four of those, but then I like to get rounded a little bit. Okay, I like to get into kind of a, an unorthodox position, a little bit, you know, bad form almost. And that kind of loosens up the lower back and kind of the top of the glutes. We sink down a little bit lower. We get our bum down a little bit lower. 
and we actually get into that lower back. And there's nothing wrong with this when we do it this way. Same thing when we do the hamstrings, we kind of round the back. It's just stretching out in a different way, okay? It kind of gets the nervous system a little bit more, okay? So we, we get a good stretch through that area. So again, I'll do about three or four like that as well. Then we'll go into, into a long lunge stretch. And there's a, there's a few different ways that we can do this. So the traditional way, long stretch, both hands down to the inside of the front foot, back leg straight. I try and take my elbow and bring it down as low as I can on my ankle bone. Notice my back leg's not moving. Okay, it stays locked out. I'll rotate both directions with this, stacking hand over hand. I'll pull back. I'll get a good stretch with my hamstring and then I'll just turn to my other leg and I'll do the same thing. Elbow down, stack hand over hand, sit back into the hamstring. Now, I like to add a little bit into this. So I might do one or two on each side like that. But now after this, what I'll do is I'll just do a partial rotation. I'll put my hand to the inside of my quad and I'll open up my front knee. And what that does is it allows me to sink my hip down. Now, if I turn to my side, I want you to see what I'm not doing though. I'm still not bending at my knee. It just allows me to get my hip down a little bit lower. I won't throw the hamstring in with this one just because I'm all I'm working on here is that back hip. So after I do that one, I'll just drop that back hip, but my back knee stays nice and strong. And again, I'll do two or three of those. Sometimes I'll do them together. Some like one day I might do one variation, next day I might do the other. So anything where you're getting a good stretch, but still are, are active in it. You're not holding it for 30 or, or, or 60 seconds. It's five to 15 seconds, even moving it, right? So if I'm doing something like this, maybe I'm increasing the range as I go, I'm not holding it because what we're trying to do there is we're trying to get the muscles pliable. We're trying to get them to move because we're still going to get into a little bit of speed agility. I don't want to just be stationary. Okay. Because I don't go through, you know, my hurdles, or whatever I'm doing straight legged, right? We need that dynamic movement. We need that range. Okay. So we want to be active in our stretching. Again, I can quote, quote that. Okay. Because it's not necessarily stretching. It's just increasing range of motion. Okay, and if that doesn't necessarily make sense, I'll use the hamstring one again. The first time you go into a hamstring stretch, this might be where you go. Okay, same thing on this step. Then I take my second step. Well, now I can go to here. Then I can go to here. Then I can go to there. Dan, does, did I just get more flexible? No, but you increased your range of motion just by going into that movement over and over again. So now if we're doing a movement like a run where I'm, I'm actually extending as I go through, I'm not going to pull my hamstring because I've already got into that range of motion. So that's kind of what that means. If, if that helps kind of explain the difference between flexibility and mobility or range of motion. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do. That whole section, whether you're on a bike or a treadmill, whether you're going through a line, or a ladder or hurdles or whatever we're using and the stretching that should be about 15 minutes. Okay. If, if you want to throw other things in there, if you've had, if you have worked with myself or another strength coach that likes you to do some ground mobility, I love ground mobility, especially on like a Monday morning, I'll spend 10 minutes doing groundwork with athletes and I'll just show you a little bit. I'm not going to go into full depth with this one, but things like, rolling out the spine, right? Laying on her back, doing some kicks. So we're doing maybe some hamstrings like this. Maybe we're doing a little back and glute work like this. We might be on back on our hands and knees, working our hips, right? So, so there is other kinds of warm up to do. And again, it, it's kind of up to, up to you as either a coach or an athlete of what you need to work on to get warmed up. Okay, being a little bit of an older guy, ground mobility is, is, a, is a good friend of mine. 
I like to do that a little bit more before I get too active. Okay, I need a little bit more time to, to warm up and loosen up. And I like to do that a little bit. And, and again, with, with my hockey athletes that I spend normally just three and a half months with in the summertime, that's what I'm trying to do with them is get them mobile again because they've been skating for such a long time um, in a normal year, I guess. So we do spend a lot of time on the ground. But if you're doing a workout on your own at home, a good 12 to 15 minutes of movement and dynamic stretching uh, is should be should get you going. And if you guys can see, like I'm probably pretty red in the face. I've got low ceilings. The heat's on. It's winter time, and I just did a quarter of a war of a warm up, and I'm ready to go. I feel great right now. Okay, so just imagine if we did a full 12 to 15 minutes of of all those movements, uh, in, including the speed agility and the and the dynamic stretching we'd be leaking pretty good, ready to go. Okay, so then normally what we would do after a warm up, we would get into kind of more of a speed agility and or plyo day. So uh, I, usually do, I usually do plyos about once, maybe twice a week, depending uh, on, the, on the group that I'm working with and depending on the volume that I'm working with them. If I'm seeing them three times a week online, I might do, uh, one or two plyo sessions. So I might do one on the first and the third day. If I, if I decide to do two speed agility or two quickness days, then I would just do a plyo on, on the middle day. So again, when you hear the, when we hear the word, word plyometrics, we think about jumping. Okay. Dan, I can touch my ceiling. If I'm over too much, I'm going to hit the bulkhead. If I jump, that's fine. Plyometric doesn't mean just jumping up. There's a lot of different definitions of it, but a, <clears throat> a lot of it is just the ability to move quick, whether it's acceleration or deceleration in our, in our jump. That's what, that's what we're, we're working on. So I, I work a lot of deceleration with athletes. So I'm going to start with plows and I'll go to some speed agility stuff. So I'm going to work with, I'm going to work deceleration first. Okay. And one of the reasons I, uh, I like to work deceleration, it teaches the athlete how to land properly. But also, when you think about sport, if you can't stop, no matter what sport you're playing, but if you can't stop, then what's the point of having a great acceleration? You're not going to be able to re-accelerate if you can't decelerate. So we teach, how, we teach you how to stop. And the, and the better you are, the better you become at decelerating, Okay, the better, the more advantage you're going to have to accelerate. Okay, if you take a really long time to decelerate, or you just decide to crash from the boards to stop, you're not going to be a really good re-accelerator. Okay, so we want to learn how to stop quickly, stop efficiently, and that's a plyometric movement. So we start with something very simple. We we just call it a swipe landing. So we're not even up on anything yet. So we'll we'll start here. We'll get up onto our tiptoes. We'll get our hands up nice and high in the air. And again, if I'm worth with a group, I'll say everyone up. And then I'll say go. And we're going to just drop as quick as we can and try and land in a good, strong position. So what is a good, strong position? It's kind of like a quarter squat. Okay. Nice and strong. We try and keep our heels just off the floor. So I'm not driving my heels into the ground. I'm, I think I usually, I try and get athletes to think about their arch. Arch of the foot and ball of the foot. So you're almost flat footed, but your heel doesn't drive. Okay, so we start with that. Okay, we'll just start with swipe landings. We're here, go nice and quick. Can I hold it? Then we might come up to something like our first step. Okay, we might do a set like that. We might come up to something a little bit higher. Okay, stool, chair, couch. And see if we can decelerate like that. Okay. And that's, that's a lot of the time. That's a lot of the time. That's what I do for plyometrics because we're in our house, because not everyone has a nice high ceiling to jump or a set of boxes or anything like that. We work a lot of stopping. Okay. Um, a set rep scheme for this. And here's, here's kind of the crazy thing. Deceleration or dropping uh, drop landings are actually a lot harder on the body than just jumping up, okay? 
if you think of, let's say, what's a three foot box here, okay? So if, if I have the space to jump onto a three foot box, okay? I'm gonna jump up as high as I can. I'm probably picking my knees up, okay? Cause I can't jump three feet with the straight legs. Okay, so if here's my box and I'm jumping up and I'm up in the air like this, and then I land on the box, that might only be a six inch landing, right? Cause you're jumping up onto something. Well, if I'm jumping off of this box or my stool, which might be, let's say it's 14 inches off the ground. Well, I'm landing 14 inches instead of just six, even though I jumped up three feet, the landing's not that hard on my body. Well, the landing coming off of that stool is harder. Okay. So that's why deceleration is so important because we don't have to just stop, right? It's not just about stopping. Well, we have to stop the load of our body, right? We have to be able to decelerate and then be able to come out of that. Okay. So that's why acceleration, even though we spend more time on it, okay, deceleration, and we, we can spend more time on acceleration because it's not as aggressive on the body, but the deceleration, the pounding on the joints and the muscles uh, is pretty tough. Why am I saying this? Is because if we're going to be working in a deceleration session, I might only do about two sets of like five to eight repetitions, okay, of each of those exercises. So I might do two sets of five of the swipe landings, might go up to the stairs, do, you know, one or two sets like that. And then I might do one or two sets doing a sideways drop too, right? I might come off the steps left, uh, stepping to my left, come off the step, <clears throat> stepping to my right <clears throat> and do some lateral stuff as well. I might not even progress anyone up to that height uh, until maybe the second or third session, just to see how they recover from that. Okay. Um, so how do we do some, some more acceleration style? Uh, st uh, style jumping. Uh, again, two-legged jumping gets a little bit dicey. I'm not even going to try it here. Not that I can jump that high, but just in case I do screw up, uh, I don't want to necessarily jump up, right? And we can't necessarily jump up onto something because then, especially in my house right now, I'm going to rack out. I'm going to hit my head. So I do a lot of split squat work or um, like even single leg work, we'll do some single leg jumping just because we can't jump as high. So I'll, I'll start with just like a split squat. Okay. And then we'll just come from here. And, and again, some of it's just working on the stability of landing, right? Because the majority of our weights out front. Okay. So we'll, we'll do a split squat jump and I might do, you know, depending on the level of that athlete, I might just use that as a warm up if they're an older athlete. Let's do one set of six on each side. So we start off with 12 jumps, six here, and then we'll do six there. Then we might switch in the air. So then we're here, stick that landing. Okay. And that's how, that's also how I'll start with this is we're trying to stick. So we decelerate. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not jumping over and over again yet. We'll get to that. Okay. And that's the thing is we always want to build. So again, I'll do one set of just a normal split squat. Maybe I'll do one or two sets where we're switching in the air. Then I might add my step. Okay. So I might go over to my staircase and I'll have one foot on top of the step. Now I still have a decent amount of room. I might not be able to swing my arms, and that's okay. It just makes me use my lower body just a little bit more. Okay. So now my focus on that front leg. Okay. gives us a little bit more height, allows us to kind of pop ourselves up. And again, just gives us a little bit more focus on that front side. Okay. So if we're actually on top of something, then I can focus on that front leg a little bit more. And that's why we like to use the steps in that sense. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we can get a little bit crazier. We could do, we can do the same jumps where we're not, where we're not stopping in between. Maybe we're doing an alternating split squat jump. And we're just here, still trying to elevate as high as we can, but we're not stopping in between. Maybe doing the same thing there. Okay. And then to progress my athletes even more, we'll get a little bit crazier 
and I'll get them to switch in the air, but then land on the same leg in front. So if I start on my right side, I'm gonna drive my left foot in front, catch on my right side. So now it's not just the ability to get up in the air, we have to be able to split our legs as quick as we can. So we're adding another component of quickness into this or power, right? So here, how fast can I switch my legs in midair? Stick that, okay? <clears throat> and be in a good strong position to do it again. So that's how I like to do plyos at home is do a little bit more split work. Um, we will do some, sorry, before I go any further, any questions about, about the jumping and stuff like that? Are we okay? I, I'm, I I'm think, trying to be thorough. Sorry, go ahead, Joel. I think we're okay so far. I just want to tell anyone, if you have a question at any time, just feel free to type in the chat or, or just unmute yourself and ask a question. We want it to be interactive. So if you have questions, just fire away. I, I'm, I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. I'm trying not to miss too much, but I also uh, don't want to keep you guys here too long either. So uh, just trying to get as much stuff in there as I, as I can. Um, and then other kind of other type of plows that we'll do are just lateral movements. So again, stuff as simple as you know single leg to single leg, working on the on the stability of that. Okay, so again, sticking it, resetting like that. Um, single leg to double leg, which doesn't seem like it's that hard, but trying to land both feet at the same time. It adds a little bit of a skill in there that we're not maybe not used to because single leg to single leg is so easy. So we try and get both feet down. So we're working on that two legged plant. And then adding uh, combining components into it, right? So maybe I'm starting here in a swipe landing, I'm dropping. Right? So we can combine those, those type of movements, right? I could even do something like this where I'm here, I could come down into a split stance, right? Combining as many things as you can, because again, it's not just about jumping up, it's about jumping quick and under control, okay? And then once you, you know, once you maybe feel like, okay, like I've, I've done this, how can I challenge myself? Okay, well, let's get some of these markers back out here. Okay, here's my single leg marker. Okay, so when I do my single leg, I can jump all the way out here. But when I go single leg to double leg, I can only get to there. So now you can start challenging yourself to beat those markers. Okay, it gives you more of an idea, right? Because what do we normally use, right? Okay, well, last week, you know, Jake was able to do the 12 inch box on the 24 inch box. Well, now I know that I can put an 18 inch box on a 24 inch box to challenge Jake. Well, I'm not there anymore. Okay. And all we're doing is lateral or split squat. Okay, well, green cone, yellow cone, maybe I do my footsteps in between. Maybe it's three and a half and it's four and a half to the other one. Okay, I'm nailing that, that one now. Okay, so now when I work on my, my swipe landings and I'm gonna to go to my double leg, okay, I beat that. So now my yellow one gets to come over there, right? Little things to help yourself out, to challenge yourself. You have all this kind of stuff at home. It's just hard because we don't always think of it, okay? Um, so, a plyo, a plyo workout, especially right now where we're not really worried about, okay, I have a game this weekend. Unfortunately, we don't, okay? You can, you can work yourself relatively hard in the sense that when, we, when we're doing plyometric workout, we kind of think of it as touches, okay, or contacts. So how many jumps have I done, okay? Well, we did a warm-up set of split squat jumps. We did one times six each leg. 
Okay, so if we, if we say it's per leg, we're at six right now, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we went into our next series of alternating and we did two times six each leg, okay? So now we're at 18 and so on and so on and so on, okay? For single, for single leg, I would maybe hit in between 60 and 80 contacts. 80 would be a very high maximum, okay? But again, if you have the recovery time and you're not necessarily right now worried about, um, you know, performance the next in two days, then maybe you can go a little bit higher. But again, at the same time, if you feel yourself slowing down a little bit and, you know, say you have three sets that you're planning left, but you're not hitting your distances anymore, or you're not hitting your, you know, at certain times your heights anymore or something like that then maybe it's just time to stop, right? Like that's the biggest thing. It, plyometrics is, is a power movement, it's a quickness movement. When you start to lose that quickness, when you start to lose that power, you're not really gonna gain too much more out of it, okay? Sometimes in that sense, I might completely reduce the, uh, like the, the height or the distance that we're trying to obtain and maybe just increase the volume and do a little bit of, training under under fatigue but i won't do it in a sense where we're trying to trying to be as powerful or as quick as we can because i know i'm going to hurt an athlete but maybe we do a different like drill where it's lighter touches and i'm just trying to train a little bit under fatigue that might be a little bit too much information but anyways no, just basically all i'm saying is just listen to your body and even though you wrote something down sometimes it doesn't mean you have to do it okay i know it's hard <laughs> I have a lot of clients and a lot of athletes that if I wrote something on the board, they're going to do it no matter what. And sometimes I've got to try and pull the reins on them just so they don't hurt themselves. Okay. So again, uh, I, again, I would say around 60 to 80 uh, per leg, which puts us, puts us at about 120 to, to 160 touches total. And that's a lot. That's a high, that's a high volume of, uh, of contacts for plyos. But again, if you're planning to have a rest day or maybe it's a Thursday and you're not planning on working out again until Sunday or Monday, then you should be able to recover by that time. Again, it is a lot. So if you do start to fatigue, maybe stop around that, that 50 or 60 per leg mark. Okay, um, that was a lot on plyos. Um, I hope I didn't go too long on that. Speed agility is a, is a little bit easier to do uh, in, in some small areas. So if you're just doing a, a quick, you know, a quick foot day or a change of direction day, um, you can use the same drill that you did in the warm up. You can just make it a little bit more um, specific to what you want to work on. So say we have those five cones or those five shoes. Uh, maybe you're going over three and just working over a, working on a single leg plant. So you're going over one, over two, over three, coming back as quick as you can. So that's what we're working on today is that single leg plant. So then maybe you're going over three, plant back two, over the other, and then back, 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 back as fast as you can. So single leg plant might be something that you're, that you're focusing on on that day, okay? So using the, using the shoe line or the marker line, whatever you have about, um, pretty simple drill. Uh, another one that we use quite a bit is just a triangle. So make sure you guys can see the peak to my triangle. So right there, and then uh, maybe walk out one or two, sorry, two or three steps, and then we'll come around here, same thing, and we'll have a triangle. So there's a few different things that we can do here. Sometimes I'll just work on different lateral movements. So I might, I might do a lateral slide down to a forwards run across. So I'll just work two sides of the triangle, okay? So I might do something where I'm here, lateral shuffle into a single leg plant, back pedal, single leg plant and back. So that would be obviously my right side, okay? So I'm, I'm working here, single leg plant come across, single leg plant coming back into that lateral shuffle. You could also do it as a crossover where maybe you're working on a two foot plant. So when you're coming back here, it's a two foot plant and then you accelerate across, come back and maybe it's just a one foot plant when you come back, okay? 
So that's one of the things we do, work the outside of the triangle. We work the inside of the triangle. This one I usually do with my athletes and I call certain things out. So I'll put a label on my shoes, one, two, and three, uh, C, A, and B, whatever you want. And then I'll just call out numbers or letters, get my athlete to react. They're not, no specific movement. It's just more of a reaction drill. And this is something that you can do, you know, obviously this would be easier if you have someone else with you uh, so they can call out the number. So maybe you're doing a zoom call with the buddy and it's, you've got, you guys have set up your triangle and it's like, okay, your turn three, one, one, three. And you just keep going back and forth. Okay. And then it's like, okay, let's go letters now. And then we'll do letters C, B, C, A, and we're doing our, we're doing our movements. And then we're like, okay, we've done three of each of those. We've gone through the triangle six times. We're going to finish it off maybe two, maybe three more sets. And I can call either, either, or. So my front shoe would be one and C, right? So if you call out C, I'm going there. Okay. If I call out two, okay. I got to figure out which is two because two is also a, Right. So you can do some kind of games like that where it's a little bit more thinking. Right. And it's not necessarily as technical as a footwork that we normally would do, but it, it just adds that kind of mental side to it where you got to think a little bit. You got to, you know, make a decision. Um, even if it's the wrong one, sometimes just commit to that shoe um, and then just get back into the into the drill and, and get ready for the next number or letter. So this is a fun one that I like to do with my athletes and you don't need a lot of space, right? Uh, and the thing is, is so that's two steps by two steps by three steps. If you have the room and you guys can't see this, but I'm gonna put my shoe here. I can move this shoe over here. So now my triangle's huge, right? So if you, even if you have just a little bit more space you can make the drill that much more difficult just by adding a little bit of distance, okay? Um, and you know what, to tell you the truth, if, you know, triangle, a square, a rectangle, um, that's kind of what we're limited to in, you know, in our homes, right? Is we have to be a little bit more structured in some of these. And <laughs> the easiest, that, or sorry, the, the simplest thing that I can tell you guys, is you can make up any any speed of agility drill you want and I, I tell my new trainers this all the time it's like i always make jokes of you know if i put a cone here and i put another one here and another one here and another one here even though it doesn't look like anything this is a drill and they always kind of look at me funny be like what do you mean you know you never measured anything out nothing looks you know nothing looks right well, maybe I'm starting over in this corner, okay? And all I'm doing is yelling out the color of the next shoe, okay? So it could be pink. Well, there's two pink shoes, so it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go to that one, boom, right? That could be a drill. Or I could start here and I'm just gonna go. There, I just made up a drill. Because in my mind, I said the closest ones are going to be a shuffle, the further ones out lateral are going to be a crossover, and the one out in front is going to be a sprint. Well, who taught you that? Nobody. I just made it up. <laughs> right? Like, I know it, it doesn't make, maybe it doesn't make sense, but at the same time, it's like, well, if I go in with a specific goal, that's what I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to work on my lateral movement today, shuffling crossing over and maybe I'll throw in a couple forward accelerations. Okay. And maybe, maybe that's not enough guidance, but at the same time, it's a little bit more fun than just here. Okay. That's five steps. I'm going to do the same thing here. I've got a nice, perfect square. And I'm not saying that this isn't a good drill either, but you know what, maybe you're just bored of being in your basement doing the, doing a four square drill or a triangle drill. So you're just gonna throw your shoes wherever today and you're just gonna make up a drill, okay? 
again, just trying to give you guys ideas, trying to get you guys to think a little bit because this does get this does get a little bit lonely sometimes. But that's the thing. It's it's as easy as just you know setting up a Zoom call with one or two other buddies and being like, you know what, let's do something. Let's get a sweat on. I know I can't come and see you, but at least we can do this together. Okay. I know you have five shoes somewhere in your house. Go get, go get them and let's let's make a drill today. Okay. Does that help? Does that give you guys enough direction with speed agility? Yeah, I think that's awesome advice. Uh, you know, hockey players get told over and over again, they need to work on foot speed, foot speed, foot speed. So it, tons of this stuff is, is great for helping that on ice component of making your feet quicker. And, and honestly, as a strength and conditioning coach, uh, working like working in, in with athletes of speed, it doesn't matter what drill that I do. I have a focus with them when I go into it. I can do the same drill on Monday and Tuesday. It can be the exact same dimensions. It can be the exact same movements, but I might change one thing. Okay. And because those two things are just a little bit different, my focus has changed, even though the drill and the movements might be the same. And that's what I try and tell my athletes. Don't just go through the drill. Okay. The, the one thing that I hate the most, and I'm going to use that word because it does, it does visually bother me when athletes do it is if I roll a ladder out and an athlete knows the three-step shuffle, one, two, out, one, two, out. Oh, coach, Danny, I know that one. I know it. And they just, I, I almost leave the I almost leave the gym, right? Because they know the drill so well, they know the movement so well that they're just kind of going through it. Okay. Well, you know what, if you know it really well, then add some speed to it, add some authority, add something to it to show me that you can actually do it. So with, with the drills that I do, I want you to work on your right foot plant. We're working on your right foot plant when you go backwards into a forward step. That's what we're working on. That's what we're going to focus on. And I, I cue them to that because that is what I need them to work on. Go fast backwards, stick your foot into the ground and accelerate out when you come forwards. That's the only thing I might get them to do that day because I just want them to focus on that. The next day we might work on something different. We might work on a turn. We might work on speed coming out of it, right? We're going to backpedal maybe a little bit slower so they focus on it and then they're working on an acceleration. So that's my, that's the biggest advice that I can give you. Don't just go and do a drill, have a specific thing that you're working on when you go and do that drill and do the drill at hundred percent. It's the only way you're going to get anything out of it. If you just go through the motions of it, there's no point in doing it. I know that I know that's hard to understand. Well, if I go through it as 100%, I'm really tired. Okay, we'll take some more rest. Well, I'm by myself. What else am I going to do? Go through it at 100%. If you go through it 100% six times and you give yourself a minute rest in between each of those six times, you're going to get more out of it than going through it 12 times at three quarter speed. Okay? Uh, that's probably the best thing I can tell you guys. I yeah. saw a question pop up there. Yeah, Dallas in the chat just made a comment. He said, I like the idea of making it random. A hockey player needs to react and this helps them to react what's happening. Couldn't agree more, Dallas. Hockey's a complete game of randomness at times when the puck's changing direction and thing, things are happening very quick. So that's a good point. For sure. And you know, and that could be something that you do with, you do with your buddy. I want you to get six shoes today, but make sure they're all different color. And that's going to be our drill. We're going to put, you know, we're going to have our start shoe and we're going to have five shoes out. Just give me the colors of your shoes. And then that's just what I'm going to call. But the blue shoe is going to be a forward sprint. The gray shoe is going to be a shuffle. The red shoe is going to be a crossover. The yellow shoe is going to be a backpedal, right? Like you can, you can have a lot of fun with that and, 
And again, you're spending time, even though it's electronically, you're spending time with some friends, you're getting to be, you know, you're getting to have a little bit of fun. And, and then that way you get your rest time. Okay. Jake goes and I go, then Joel goes and Jake goes again. And we have a little thing that we're, that we're doing. We're still working hard um, and we're still get to spend some time together and we still get our rest time because we're actually doing it with somebody else. So that's it. That is a great point. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about plyometrics or speed agility? I want to get uh, into the weights a little bit. Um, and little, some of it's just to show you guys some of the stuff that we can use at home. All right, we're good with speed agility. Okay. Um, I'm just going to clean up my shoes here. Okay. So what I have back here, you guys, um, and again, for any of you guys that have done any kind of online workouts, you've probably seen this already or have done some of it. I have a backpack, I have a salt bag, I have a dumbbell, and I have a step, okay? This is all I need. This is all you need. If you have more, that's great. If you have less, that's fine. We'll find a way, we'll find something for you guys to do, okay? Um, typical workout, easiest way to make a workout, okay? If you've done a plyometric workout already, so we already did a plyo, there's no need to throw any kind of power into your lift. You've done that already. You've, got, you've, re, you've reacted quickly. You've reacted powerfully. That's taken care of, okay? Let's go into a lift. I, uh, easiest thing to do, depending on what you have or, or how much you want to work out, upper, lower, upper, lower, okay? We try and hit a push pull on each, okay? So a push, an upper body push would be like a chest press, a push up, an overhead press, a tricep, okay? So those are all presses, okay? Whether it's like a tricep dip or that. Upper body pull, single arm row, double arm row, a pullover. I'll show you this. So the pullover we lay down for, okay? Um, and then auxiliary movements. I'll get into that a little bit later, but auxiliary movements are like, a lateral fly, a back fly, a bicep curl, things like that. I'll go through this a little bit more. I just want to get some definitions out of the way. Lower body push, okay? Normally that's a squat, some sort of split squat, double leg squat, single leg squat, lunges, okay? Sometimes lunges can be a pull movement. I won't get too crazy with that, but there's kind of, there's kind of a two way there with lunges. Um, lower body pulls or extensions, okay? Um, hamstring curls, hip hip hinges or hip, uh, hip lifts. Uh, we can hinge, which is kind of a pull as well, okay? So there's like a kneeling hinge, there's a standing hinge. Um, and then we have, we have lots of auxiliary that we do with the lower body for our groins, for our hips. Uh, even calves and stuff like that. I don't usually throw those into our workouts, but we can do those. So in a, in a set, so say I'm doing four exercises, I might do a push, pull, lower, push, pull, upper. Okay. Three to four sets, eight to 10 repetitions. Okay. If I'm doing single leg stuff or single arm, I might go six to eight, depending on what you have for weights. If you actually have a dumbbell or barbells, then you can then you can maybe go a little bit lower in your repetitions because you can go heavier in your in your weights. If you're just using household items like salt bags and backpacks with books or backpacks with salt bags in them, um, you're kind of you kind of cap off at a certain weight. You probably hit that 10 to 12 repetition mark. Okay. So we just add volume. <clears throat> I might do two different series of that. Okay, so I would do a double leg squat, single leg hip extension, say a single arm uh, chest press and a double arm pullover, okay? So that would be my first series. I'll go over that right away, okay? Then in my second set, I might do a reverse lunge, okay? And a hip hinge, which either kneeling or standing. Standing, they're called RDLs. Kneeling, they're called Nordic hamstring curls. So. I can show you the hinges there as well. And then I might go into uh, overhead tricep or maybe a single arm uh, a single arm shoulder press. So I'd add another press in there. And then maybe I would do uh, a single arm row, okay? And I'll, again, I'll show you some of, these, some of these things that you can do with and without weight. 
And then um, sometimes I'll add auxiliary movements in with the workout. So instead of just doing four exercises, so again, if I do an, a lower body push, lower body pull, upper body push, upper body pull, I might do a lower body auxiliary. And then I would do the opposite in the next set and maybe add an upper body auxiliary in there as well. Okay. So let's start with our double leg squat. I'm going to use a salt bag here because this is a, this is a big one. This is a 20 kilo salt bag. Okay. So I might just do this for my front squat. Okay. So kind of the fun thing with these is that sometimes they're actually harder than, than our normal weights. So I would get it up in my rack position, like a normal front squat. Okay. So I set my feet. Do my front squat. What I mean by having a little fun with this, maybe I just do it one sided. Maybe I do five or six or I'm just loading from my right side. Then I do five or six where I'm loading the other side. Okay. So I'm actually offsetting the weight a little bit. Okay. So <clears throat> that kid's pretty heavy. Okay. Especially when you're, when you're using something awkward. So that's why it's kind of fun sometimes when you have non-traditional weights. Okay. Because it, it is a little bit more kind of like sport in the sense that you're not just holding a bar, holding a bar on your shoulders or on your front. You actually have to stop this thing from moving. The salt slides a little bit more one way, a little bit more the other, those kind of things. Okay. So that would be my double leg push. Okay. Is my squat. Well, now I'm going to go to a single leg pull or a single leg extension. Okay. So I'm coming up onto my step and I'm here. So I'm trying to get, extend my hips. I'm driving my heel down and extending through here. So again, I'm getting kind of the, the big muscles with the squat. I'm getting the back of the legs with that hip lift. Okay. Then I'm going to go into a single arm chest press. So again, I have a dumbbell here. I don't have a bench or a ball or a foam roller right now. So I'm just coming down to the ground. So I'll accelerate off the floor. Okay. But I can use this if I wanted to. Okay. So I could get up here. This probably isn't the most stable stool in the world, but what I would do here is I would get my hips up. So I got to use my core a little bit more on that chest press. Okay. So that makes it a little bit challenging as well. Okay. So, if, and if you don't have, if you don't have a traditional dumbbell, okay. There's some other things that you can do if you have something that's elevated. So say this isn't a dumbbell, say that just something that's off the ground. I can put my hand on it. Okay. So I'm here, I can do a staggered push up, but then I can finish the push up with one hand. So I'm still getting that single arm movement. Okay. And then we'll do a double arm pull. So I'm going to use my traditional dumbbell just to show you the movement itself. Again, I don't have anything to lay on. This is our pull over. So I'm going to bend my elbows. I'm going to hinge at my shoulder. So my arms stay in one position. When the weight hits the ground, I pull it back over my chest. Keep my abs nice and tight. Pull that over, okay? <clears throat> and then, like I said, maybe, we do it, maybe we're doing five, so I'm adding an auxiliary movement in. I'm gonna sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna work my hip flexors a little bit here, challenge them. I'm gonna lift my foot up, reach it out to the side, bring it back, bring it down. Okay. Doesn't seem like a hard movement until you actually do it. So again, I'm trying to stay up nice and tall, lift, reach, come back. Okay. So again, in that set, I would do again, because all I have say is the salt bag, I would do anywhere from eight to 12 repetitions on my squat, on my hip lift back here. 
I would probably do eight to 10 on each leg. If I'm, if I'm relatively versed at that, 10 is probably good. If you're not very good at it yet, stay around that maybe six to eight mark and just really work on the hips. Anything sort of a single arm, I would say six to eight on each side. If you're using a traditional weight, for sure. If you're doing a single arm push up, you might want to stay to six a side because it ends up being 12 push ups total. But if, again, if you're quite strong and you're able to do lots of push ups, you could do eight on each side there. And then with the pull over, I would say same thing about eight to 12 because it is the double arm movement. And then with that hip lift, leg reach, again, it is a lot harder than you think. I would stay around that eight mark. Okay. And then, like I said, three to four sets. So you go through that series three or four times. Um, you're getting a pretty good workout in. Okay. Was there a question that popped up there quick? No, it was just a guy that Jeremy had to leave to go to hockey. Oh, okay. He was just thanking you for the session. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I saw something popped up there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the second series of weights. Okay. Like I, I said, so this one, uh, like I said, we can throw a lunge in there. So whether it's a reverse lunge, so whether we're stepping back, again, maybe we're doing eight aside there. We could do a forwards lunge. We could do a side lunge, or we could even do a bowler squat or a bowler lunge, which is a little bit, it's more of a cross behind. Okay, so a lot of different variations of single leg movements that we could do. Okay, we could even come up, and again, I don't trust this that well, but we could even come up onto something that's a little bit more sturdy, okay, and work a single leg squat, okay? So I, I love to throw in single leg movements. Um, I like the Bulgarian squat or the or the ele the back foot elevated squat. So we're like this, weight here, weight here. Okay, so always always trying to throw a single leg push movement in there. Okay, uh, and then like I said, we can do a hinge. So we could do this double leg or single leg. So again, I could do this with my salt bag, and a hinge. All that means is we're gonna we're gonna try and pivot at the hip. So we try and keep our upper body nice and strong. And then we just push our bum back. Notice I'm not reaching the weight anywhere. I'm not trying to go anywhere with the weight. I'm just trying to push my hips back. And then we kind of squeeze the glutes as we pull. So we're just pulling ourselves back up. We can also do this one kneeling. Okay. And again, we're trying to stay nice and strong here. We push our bum back. We go as low as we can without falling forwards. And then we extend the hips, squeeze the glutes and hamstrings together, push back, squeeze. So either or, I'm just showing you two different hinges that you can do. I showed you about six different single leg squats that you can do there. Um, Okay, so those are those are the two lower body ones. Uh, body push, like I said, we can do a, a single arm or a double arm overhead press. I can't do this one standing in, in this in this uh, basement, so I would do it either from a half kneel position, or I would just sit right onto the ground and do it here. I might even take that salt bag and do a double arm press. Again, could do that from a half kneel position as well. Okay, so that that's kind of a bigger muscle push. We could do, we could still do a tricep dip. Okay, so again with the shoulders back, hips just off, right? We could do a dip there. Um, a hanging dip is usually more of a a tougher movement. So if you have like rings or um, even a dip bar, if you do have a home gym, you have a dip bar that can be replaced. Um, instead of an overhead press, because it's still a push movement. And then the single arm row, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this one, okay? So you can do this one just freestanding like this, okay? If you have a, a bench or, or a, a, a step or something, you can do it supported, okay? If you have a salt bag, 
you don't have a traditional one, a traditional weight, you could do a row like that. It's not as convenient, okay? But it can be done. Um, one of the other things that you can do, I don't have a full-size hockey stick here. You can, again, this might be better off if you're standing on top of something, then you can hang your bag down like this and you could do more of like a barbell row. Okay, uh, if you only have a certain amount of weight, you could probably get this into a single arm row where it's using a heavier weight. Okay, so it, it does, it does um, make you be a little bit more creative sometimes, but it, it's honestly not that tough, right? Throw a bunch of weight in a backpack. Uh, this might even fit, you know, around here, right? You're hanging off the side there, okay? So you do have to get a little creative with some of the stuff at home if you don't have your traditional weights. But it, it doesn't mean that you can't get a good workout in, okay? You have a 20 kilo bag at home of salt, throw it up on your shoulder and do 15 squats and see how you feel after, okay? You're still gonna get that, you're still gonna get that uh, effect from it. You're still, you know, you're still doing something. Okay. Um, what am I missing? How's that? That's, that's excellent. That's awesome information. There's, there's so much stuff we can do in our houses that we haven't even thought of before. It, it, that is good information, man. Um, I'll just open it up to the, to the chat as, does anyone have any questions for, for Dan or does anyone want to want to ask him a question, unmute themselves about any, any strength and conditioning exercises or any things to work on going forward? Challenge him to a squat contest with the salt. <laughs> <laughs> I might lose that one tonight, but. <laughs> if, uh, you know what, if anyone's thinking about conditioning, so I guess this isn't something that I really touched on yet. I can kind of go through it really quickly. Um, I do condition my athletes online quite a bit and I, I do it as a time sequence. Okay. So say we pick five exercises or even four exercises. Okay. So say we're doing a speed squat. We're doing a burpee. We're doing a split squat jump. And then let's say we're doing a crunch, legs up crunch. We're just gonna throw in a little bit of, little bit of conditioning and core and together. So say we're doing a 30 second work, 15 second rest, okay? And we're gonna go through all four of those exercises, 30, 15, 30, 15, 30, 15, 30, 15. We take a minute rest. We do that four or five times, okay? Simple conditioning. But all, the biggest thing is it's getting its heart rate up. Okay, like we'll do, just give me some space here. So even something like a, like a 90 degree jump. So it just doesn't have to be fast. We'll do that for 30 or 45 seconds straight, right? Same thing, split squat jumps, drop. You could come up together, drop. You could go right through. We can do lateral jumps, right? There's a lot of movements that you can do um, just to, just to challenge yourself. I, I do one that most people think it's a burpee, but it's not a burpee. It's just an up down. I use weight to make it a little bit harder. Right. But if I do that for 30 or 45 seconds, my heart rate's going to come up and that's all we're trying to do with conditioning, right? We're trying to work for a certain amount of time, rest for a certain amount of time. Sometimes I'll get the athletes to go, 30 seconds of burpees into 30 seconds of crunches or 30 seconds of squat hops or something. So they do a minute straight. Then I only give them 15 or 30 seconds rest. Then we do two more exercises, 30 and 30, right? So I change, I change the timing. Maybe I want my athletes to move fast. So we're doing that lateral jump side to side. I want you guys to go as fast as you can for 15 seconds but I'm going to give you 30 or 45 seconds rest. So we change the style from maybe 
you know, anaerobic lactic to anaerobic a lactic, right? Or we're doing it for, we're doing everything at 60 to 70%, but we're making sure it's like 15 or 20 minutes long. So it's going to be going to end up hitting our aerobic system. Right. So like, just like speed agility, I could do the same conditioning on Monday as I do on Wednesday, change the timing scheme of it, change the speed at which they're doing it. And then I've changed the system that I'm hitting. Okay. Got a uh, question here in the chat there, Dan. From okay. Uh, she's asking, do you do specific goalie programming at your gym or do they usually just do group slash team workouts? My goalie already does daily stretching routine. So is there anything specific um, to do just for goaltenders? Some, I, I guess I should say sometimes I do, depending on, depending on, uh, who I'm working with or, or what they're looking for, I guess. So in the, in this case, um, yes. Like if, if I'm doing speed agility, so say I'm doing a certain drill with my athletes, I'll get the goalie to do that with us. But if then maybe what I'm doing is I might, I might change the drill for everyone else. I might take that goalie over and do something a little bit more specific with them. Right. So it's not a session that's just for, that goaltender, but I will make sure there's some specific stuff. So if I'm doing, so maybe I'm doing a reaction drill with, with my athletes, I do it with them once. So they know how to do it. And then I'll get them to do it together. I might take that, that goalie over and do something similar as it's a reaction drill, but I'll need the ball or the, whatever we're using that day, maybe either to move it a little bit differently or I need him to react into a smaller area. So if my athletes are using like a five by three area, well, that's way too big. I need the goalie to move in a smaller area. So I might, I might shorten the drill or just make a drill specific for them. Um, but I, I haven't ever trained a group of goalies together, right? Like uh, maybe that, that's a better way to put it, but I, I always seem to have a couple goalies in with me. So I do try and be, a little bit more specific, uh, not all the time, but um, but on certain days, like speed agility days, I'll I'll try and make it make it a little bit more specific for them, if that helped. Hopefully, yeah, for sure. Any uh, any other questions anyone has in the chat or wants to ask Dan? Lots of, lots of good info here. If, if you do have a question after the, after we're done here or think of it later on, just please feel free to email me and I can always forward it to, to Dan to get the correct answer about, about anything you want to know about strength and conditioning for sure. And just a note, if anybody missed anything uh, tonight, we will be posting the uh, the recording later on. Uh, it won't be right away, but uh, it will be posted later on. So if you missed anything throughout, we'll, uh, you'll be able to see it again. Oh, here's one. How long are you typically recommending for a workout? How many days of the week, et cetera? Um, you know, it, it's honestly right now, you, you could work out four or five times a day, four or five times a week. Um, but it's, you know, what do you, I guess in a sense too, is like, what do you have uh, to, you know, make the, make the workouts a little bit of a variety right now. Cause I find that's, what's, that's, what's going to be the hardest thing is, well, I just feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. So it might take a little bit more time to plan it, but there, there's no, there's no reason right now why you can't be working out four or five times a week. So right now I still do, I still do have a hockey group coming to the, to the gym with me in the mornings. They work out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, 
I do a variety of things with them, uh, speed agility plyometric wise, strength. I always do strength Monday, Thursday, lower body, Tuesday, Friday, upper body. And I, I do upper body on Friday to make sure they still come to the gym because you're guaranteed to get a 17 to 22 year old male to come to the gym if they're doing upper body. So that's why I do it that way. Um, and then right now, because we don't necessarily know when, if, when any of them are going to start playing, um, I don't do a ton of conditioning with them just because it is tougher with the masks on. Uh, but usually once, once a week, sometimes twice, I will challenge them with their, with their mask on to, to breathe a little harder and to, and to still do a little, a little bit of conditioning. But I'll usually do a plyometric, one plyometric workout a week. I'll usually do two speed agility workouts. Uh, and then sometimes I'll do either a mobility session, acceleration. I kind of, I kind of see how they're feeling too. Um, just cause that's what I've always done. I guess I always like to question my athletes to see how they feel. Um, but if you're working out three or four times a week and you've, and you've kind of devised a plan to do that, um, then yeah, there's, there's no reason why you can't work out four or five times Right. Even if one, even if one day, so say Wednesday or a Saturday is just your mobility day, maybe you just, you know, head downstairs, you have a stretching routine that you do that started off with some ground mobility, and then it goes into some longer holds, longer holds, um, kind of variation of maybe yoga and just stretching. That's a, that's a great thing for you to do. Uh, Clint has a question here, cardio before weights or weights after cardio? You know, that's a, <clears throat> that's a great question. And, and the thing is, is I don't, I don't know the right answer for that because I've done both. And I, I, sometimes I like to do cardio before. So here's my explanation to that. If I have a running session that I've planned, I'll do it before the workout. Cause I feel that if I, <clears throat> if I go through warm up and I go through um, maybe some speed agility and then weights, and then my athletes go to run, I don't feel like I get everything out of them when they run. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't mean that I'm doing a full speed running day with them. Sometimes we might just go and be doing like tempo work. So like 70 to 80% where I need them to keep tempo or build up and slow down as they go. I find that, that sometimes I don't get enough effort out of them at the end of a workout. And I'm always nervous that an athlete's going to hurt themselves running, especially hockey players, that they're going to hurt themselves running when they're more fatigued. So I like to do it when they're fresh. So in the summertime, when the track's open, um, we'll meet at the track before their workout. So before their lift, and we'll go through a full warm up. I'll do their whole running workout. Then we'll go to the gym and we'll finish with their lift and their, and their core. If I'm doing, um, a non-running cardio session where maybe we're doing uh, more machines, right? Or we're doing the kind of cardio that I showed you uh, where it's like just kind of movements, stationary movements. But, you know, if we're on the air bike or if we're on the rower or if we're on the stationary bike or the Versa climber, um, then I don't have a problem with my athletes doing it at the end. Um, sometimes they, they still may not push themselves as hard, but the machines are tough right? Like the, the machines are difficult. So they're still, they're still getting a great cardio workout. And I don't have an issue with athletes training, uh, training their condition under fatigue, especially on some of the machines, because it's, it's quite a, quite difficult to hurt yourself when, uh, when you're on a machine, when you have to self propel, when you have to run like that, um, I find there is, there's a greater chance of injury. So I usually run before a workout and then I'll sometimes I'll do machines before or after depending on like I said it, it kind of depends but uh it is it's actually a question that that is uh I'll say discussed not necessarily argued but it's discussed quite a bit amongst lots of conditioning coaches yeah good question any uh anybody else have a question Not uh, not seeing anything right now here, Dan. Uh, okay. Just any thank you again for taking time to to talk with us and and walk us through that. That's awesome stuff. Absolutely, uh, really appreciate 
you doing it. And, and uh, like I said earlier, if you have a question later and you want, want me to find the answer, just please email me uh, later on and we'll get it figured out for you. So I appreciate you uh, running our group through all this stuff. It's awesome information. Yeah, thank you very much, you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, happy holidays. Stay fit over the holidays, everyone.